Okay, we're at the uh, first scoping meeting at Highline College uh, for the SeaTac Airport Sustainable uh, Master Plan Environmental Scoping. And earlier tonight, we spent some time uh, looking at all the storyboards and talking to uh, personnel from the Port of Seattle and the consultant Landrum and Brown. And we're concluding the evening, we're going to go talk to a court reporter that's been arranged to take comments. Uh, for the record, and we're going to go provide some comments now. So, uh, my name is Steve Edmiston. Um, I want to start off with some comments about the process tonight. Uh, these are my own comments, but they're also comments I've heard from many that attended the event tonight. Uh, the first is a source of frustration in the community that we asked, and specifically the city of Des Moines asked, uh, for a public town hall style of engagement on this process. Uh, uh, by letters between the City of Des Moines and Port of Seattle, that request has been denied. Uh, and a substitute engagement, this event tonight was inserted, which is a room full of storyboards and uh, individuals either employed by the port or by the port's consultant. Uh, uh, and uh, that is a source of frustration because the community has uh, not been afforded the same style of participation that communities east, west, and north of the airport have been afforded. Uh, planning period was not provided to Des Moines, so, or Federal Way, or Nongi Park, or Tukwila, or Burien. Uh, no, Burien got that. So that's a source of frustration. The second is timing. This is our first participation under this SAMP, and we are 11 days before the close of it, uh, two weeks before the cutoff on the 28th. Uh, the window has been running for 60 days, but today was the day that we were provided subject matter experts, allegedly, to ask questions about. And so we really only have two weeks, which seems very inadequate. The City of Federal Way asked for an extension, and that's been denied. So it feels like there's no meaningful engagement actually happening for the South End communities. Uh, the third thing is walking through the meeting, what we found, although all marketing pieces that were sent out to the community said there would be subject matter experts attending to answer our questions, what we discovered was the people in front of the storyboards wouldn't answer questions, they wanted to turn the questions into a comment. In other words, we can't get information to help frame and phrase our comments, we're just looking at, in many cases, blank storyboards with category. That's been a source of frustration. It feels like to many in the community, this is about the least effective engagement that we could receive, and we're frustrated by that. Uh, I know we're going to run through time, but nobody's behind me. I guess I can go back and line up again, but let's run through the three minutes. My first comment that I would like to share this evening is um, we need to include a complete assessment of the growth that's already occurred in the last four years. We have 97,000 additional aircraft operations that have been added at SeaTac Airport since 2014, January 1. And there's been no study and no assessment, no mitigation, no action plan, nothing's been done with respect to those flights. And we have great concern that we won't be studying those flights as part of the baseline going forward for the near-term projects. If we leave those out, we really have warped what's really going on in the communities because that's what's happening right now. And it's happening since the SAMP was first conceived. So we know it's within the window. That should be included, that study. The second is skipping forward to after the near term projects. Well, you've done three minutes, but there's no one else in line. So I'm giving you another three minutes. I appreciate that. And if someone shows up and we need to time it out, I'm happy to do that. I totally understand the process. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, the second comment, I think, is also kind of temporal in nature, what it should be included temporarily. And it's, let's go beyond the near-term projects that will be 2027. That will add 80,000 flights. So we'll be nearly a, a, a gross-up of 200,000 flights from 2014 to 2027. Um, but there's a long-term project in vision. And originally that was going to be included in the same process, but about six months ago it got carved out. Um, and there's a great concern that I have, and I would like it included as a comment to include within the scope the impacts to human health and the environment from what is anticipated for long-term projects. Don't carve it out and leave it off the table because your own studies are showing, the port's own studies are showing, will be at capacity in 2029. So the idea that we would go forward with 10 years of construction and growth with no idea what's actually going to happen in the next 10 years is hard to square in, I think, a rational sort of uh, going forward process. Third is adequate geography. 
I think we have, so geographical scope, uh, there's a great concern that there's a focus historically on what's called the federal contour, what, what is uh, looked at for mitigation very close to the airport and for um, uh, windows and insulation and things like that. And it's a very small area around the port. The effects of the noise and the emissions from aircraft operations are clearly felt in the southern border of Federal Way. And so we need in the geographic scope of this study to make sure that all of the six South King County cities are included, their entire geography, in terms of the impacts to human health and the environment. Uh, next, I think we want included in the scope of this study a complete and robust review of all of the science that has emerged in even the last three years about the impacts of noise and emissions from aircraft operations over human beings. Because all of those studies that I've been able to see with this high-tech tool called Google uh, <laughs> um, all come down the same way. I think what we're finding is the science is coming out and saying it's really, really bad and it's far worse than you think. And obviously pollution, ultrafine particles and other problems, that science is also emerging. So not including that within the scope of our study would seem negligent because those studies are out there and not accumulating you see a, a gross error. Um, next I would talk about uh, including in the scope of this study the pending science that's already underway in Washington State. Um, we have ultrafine particle studies underway at the University of Washington. We have a mitigation study that's just underway, run by the State Department of Commerce. Um, those will take some time, but the notion that we would proceed in any format with the SAMP without the results of those studies also seems very short sighted. I think we should have the results of those studies before we go forward with the SAMP. That should be included in the scope. Um, I think we should have special inclusion of um, study in this SAMP of sensitive populations. And what I mean by that is because we know from the science that elderly populations and children are more highly affected. We can't just sort of say a human being is a human being. What we know from an emergent science is that we have a huge population in the Moines of elderly communities and they're impacted more. Uh, and we should just carve that out and have separate study, make sure we're doing that. Same thing with overnight flights. They are causing more damage than daytime flights uh, because they interfere with, interfere with uh, and cause sleep disruption and all the things that will go with that on a chronic basis. Um, and uh, I would also like to include it in the scope of this, um, of this environmental review. And, and this is actually super important, but not for everybody but it's super important for certain communities, and that is we shifted to a full-time use in the last two years of the third runway. It used to be a part-time runway. Uh, this, the middle runway closed down for construction, shifted all of that flight to the third runway, and I think they liked it. I think the, the bottom line is it was something that was considered advantageous, and now it is a full-time runway. So what's happened in the last even two years is that runway and the communities under that runway have seen uh, I think it's a six-fold increase in the number of flights over their neighborhoods that didn't ever used to be there before. Uh, and that needs, you know, that is not a, a base, that is, that it has to be part of this study because it's brand new. Um, also I'm concerned that the projections that are um, set forth already with the near-term projects don't seem to add up in terms of the number of flights that will be coming in the next 10 years. If you use any of the data that from the last four years and the year-on-year -year increases from the last four years, the notion that in, in, in a four-year period we grew by 97,000 aircraft, but in the following 10-year period we're only going to grow by 80,000, it's a really hard number, to, especially with the growth that they're projecting in the population, which is more of a straight-line hockey stick. It's sort of like, here's the population growth, here's the need for passenger growth, and but all of a sudden, the actual airline operations growth is somehow way below that line. It doesn't seem to make sense. So the question, and I think what we can include in this study, is, is a review of what happens if our estimates are grossly low. Uh, and uh, the final thing I think we should include in this study, because it's clearly an alternative, to handling all of the region's growth in one tiny footprint airport is a regional airport now.
Um, and the notion that we would for, again, decades, and we've done it for decades now, decades and decades and decades, keep saying that's something we need to study. Um, I, I, I haven't really run into anyone that suggests there's a reason not to start the citing process immediately. Other than folks that have an interest in economic growth right here in a very specific and small sliver of our state, our region. Um, if that's what you want, then you want to handle all of the reasons growth the SeaTac Airport. If you want a, an even and fair distribution of the costs and burdens of aviation, uh, and, and perhaps even improve the overall efficiency in the long run, then you'd want to jump on a regional airport as soon as possible. Um, whether we can get that, I don't know. I think it should be included in the scope. Those are my comments. You've been very patient. You gave me extra time, and I really appreciate that. The failure in this type of engagement is that it prevents the community from, as a collective, uh, obtaining information so that the community has kind of the same data set of questions and answers. Uh, the community has the same opportunity to see subject matter experts who can answer or can't answer questions that we have. And what happened tonight with people standing in front of storyboards uh, not answering questions but simply saying make a comment uh, really uh, to many felt like a very big waste of time. It also feels like a strategy that is designed um, intentionally or not to prevent meaningful engagement, to, to, to prevent um, that uh, ability of citizens to have enough information to turn their own experiences into meaningful comments for the purpose of designing a planned environmental review. When you walk into a room and the storyboards are blank and there's nothing on them, um, the expectation that a member of the community who has no background, who has uh, no scientific knowledge, has no um, aviation knowledge to understand what would normally be on a board like that, I think that's a, 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 a fairly Ridiculous, ex ridiculous expectation for a member of the community. Um, so I think there was a lot of frustration uh, here tonight. There was a lot of frustration uh, about the fact that it was marketed that subject matter experts would be here to answer questions, and that really didn't happen. Um, I think there are plenty of subject matter experts here, but the uh, messaging appeared to be, uh, don't answer questions, just tell people to vote to, to make comments. So that makes citizens um, make comments with no information uh, because they can't get the questions answered. And that was not what tonight was supposed to be. Um, a couple of nice things. Uh, uh, I thought the court reporter uh, I just talked to, it was a nice touch to be able to let people to um, just talk about uh, what their concerns are and what they sh think should be included in the study. Um, but overall, uh, I thought the turnout from the community uh, reflected a great deal of interest uh, in uh, what's going on. Um, I think the frustration uh, in the community is very high with both what's being proposed as well as this process uh, uh, where we don't have a uh, public uh, live town hall. Um, and uh, we'll just keep working. We'll just keep moving. All right.